Hey, there we go. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Greetings, my excellent friend. It's so good to see you. I'm starting a little bit late here. My apologies. I had a meeting this morning with some of the fine folks from Content Lab. They're the sponsor sponsors of the uh, uh, Live Coders team for 2019. I think they're coming back with us in 2020. So good to be working with them. They've got some some tremendous things that they're doing over there at Content Lab IO. Check it out. They've, they're they're a uh, pretty interesting organization that they're building over there. Good morning uh, and such hype. JB the Dev, good to see you. Simo is here. Eternal Dev Coder. Uh, Sean of the Dev, hello, hello. And Kabazi, good to see you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let me, let me get some music playing here in the background and I want to get back into our Blazer components. And, uh, wow, those lights are really bright on me today. Um, can I adjust those lights real quick? Do you mind? Do you mind if I do a thing there? Can can we just cut that brightness back a little bit, see how that goes? And uh, how about the contrast? Oh, dear Lord. I just kind of... I, I don't know why I'm so red, right? There, there's a red thing happening there. I don't know. I think that's better. Um... I'm going to get back in working on our Blazor components for folks that are migrating from web forms. I had a great conversation with a fellow live co coder, uh, Fanny Reinders, on, uh, on Twitter this morning about how can we start to automate? How can we start to move folks into, into Blazor a little bit easier? Get their ASPX pages, their ASCX pages rewritten. 
And there's there's a little bit more to it. It could be a little bit more complex than folks understand, but um, there's some opportunities there to learn and maybe build some simple tools to get some things moving in the right direction. I don't know. So he's going to take a look at that. But uh, I want to talk about our tree view component today and start building some start building some event handlers. We built a checkbox into our our tree view, um, but we can't do anything with the checkbox yet. So let's let's take a look at how that checkbox is being interacted with and what we can do to start adding features to that and uh, right so that we receive the the unchecked information. Red plus white equals green in the chroma key. Yes, absolutely. Red equals white minus green. Um, maybe. Maybe. Good morning, Hugo. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome in. Um, so let me let me head over to the code here and and get some music playing in the background. Let's do the music first. Um, I've got check this out. I've got a new Stark Industries shirt on. You'll be able to see it better when I get over to this camera. Um, I'm gonna play Orchid today. This is music to code by by our friend Mr. Carl Franklin. Scientifically designed, it's engineered to get you in the flow, get you in the groove, focused on whatever task it is you may be working on. There it is. Check out the link right there from the Fritz bot. You can execute the music command just like Hugo did to get this link and learn more at mtcb.pwop.com. And uh, thank you so much, Carl, for letting us listen to your music together as we write code here on Twitch. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's take a look at, let me get back over here so I can see what's going on. Um, I gotta get logged into featured chat. See, I'm a little bit late today. I'm all, I'm all a mess since I had that breakfast meeting today, but we are set. We're good to go now. There we go. Let me head over to the code. There's my terminal. Let me get that set up real quick. Um, I'm going to go to... Uh, I have my Blazor Web Forms Components project in this folder. Um, and let me set up... I'm only going to open the testing on the side here so we can see that. So I'm going to open... No, nope, not that one. Uh, is it that? Is it this? Oh, there it is. Uh, there you go. And I'm going to scoot that across shrink down the font size there there we go get over into the copper beardy with the raid beardy raided my stream with five views hey there my friend good to see you thanks so much for the raid uh appreciate you sending some folks over here that's right Svava. copper beardy raid indeed good to see you uh returning the favor from yesterday i see <laughs> How was how'd it go over there? What were you working on on your channel? Can I get a shout out for Copper Beardy while we're here? Uh, let me know. Curious. Uh, you were working on Code Cat Katas yesterday, so Copper Beardy is another member of the Live Coders team. Um, make sure you check out what he's been working on over there as well. So I'm just gonna kick off a .NET Watch test. I don't care to actually read the text in here. If I need to, I'll zoom in. But I'm more interested in seeing that red happens here, right? That something didn't test properly. Eight hours, 22, no, no. Eight minutes, 22 seconds. No, wait, that can't be right. Eight hours, 22? That's not right at all. No, that time is not right at all. Because I just started the bot like just there it is i'm not sure where you're getting that time from that's weird still recovering from the rate that's funny um yeah eight hours 22 is a little weird any update on the three one workshop no eternal dev coder i haven't uh it, we're gonna be looking at february for that at this point there's just too much too many other things going on in the next week here before i get ready to go to uh, Stockholm for Svitog. Um, it, stuff that I need to get done before I leave. That's it, going to push that 3 1 workshop back a little bit. So we currently have 82 tests out here that are running, that are, that are working well for us. 
um, to verify our tree view component at this point. I've already got it open here in Visual Studio, and I want to talk about how we can detect, how, what we can do with the checkbox interactions that we're doing on that tree view. So I've got a, a handful of unit test templates here. Let me get rid of these, right? The, and they're just set up so they look like the look like what we expect to have run our tree view component and verify that various features are delivered and rendered when that component is included. But here's my, my tree node that we've been writing and I've got, where's the tree view razor is here. It's a very simple top level component, but at some point I need to start handling what happens when, when those checkboxes are clicked. So let me head over, let me get a, I don't have a, I'll use this one. And let's get over to GitHub. We can take a look at the components here. What? What? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 that's whatever. Uh, no, I don't want to update my password. What are, you, what are you doing? I wanted to go over here. All right. Um, and we are working on... Go away. Actually, no, let's use... Octo tree over here so we can browse and pick up some of these things. Um, yeah, I need to change because we are working in this branch. Thank you. Now I can look over in the docs folder, find the tree view, and there should be an event handler for what happens when you click on these checkboxes. Lily Hazel is here. Good morning. Um, yeah, I forgot to set a project command. Thank you, Hugo. Um, all right, so there are, there should be events here for tree node check changed. Check this out. It occurs when the checkboxes of the tree view control change state between posts to the server. Well, we don't actually post to the server when we're in Blazor. And we also have expanded and collapsed events that we can raise so I think we can add um, and we, we don't have a way to select nodes yet, but I think we can look at these three events, tree node check changed, tree node expanded and tree node collapsed because we do support those interactions with our current tree view. So it's going incrementally forward in time. What? Hugo. Um, let me see here. So I'm going to control click to open these. And I'm going to move the checkbox one later here. Let's see if we can, if we can build something to handle the expand collapse events pretty quickly because I, th we've, we've got a handler here that's already doing these, that's handling the show hide of these. And we might be able to do something to make this interesting. It, and useful B17 right now. Are just resubscribed for 15 months. Keep it up. I shall. Thank you so much, my friend. C17R. Th that's tremendous. 15 months. We're going to make a donation to code.org. Thank you very, very much for that support. Every subscription, every cheer, we make a donation to code.org this quarter. Last quarter, we donated to uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and I've left the Tiltify open just below. If, if you want to help those folks, um, you, you have a couple extra shekels you want to throw to a good cause, check it out just below me here on the screen. So, yeah, our friend Lily Hazel, she's a member of the Live Coders team, doing a tremendous job helping helping team members uh, get organized and, and uh, put together some behind-the-scenes things for, that we're planning for 2020. Really, really... Uh, excited to be working with her uh, on on this community. Really great stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is the right. It's a tree node event handler when it collapse when we have a collapse event happens, and it's a tree node event handler when when the node expands. Right. So uh, let me just scroll up here. Yeah. Let's just look at our current 
current component and talk about where we're going to inject these things, how we're going to add these additional features. Ancient Coder! Greetings, my excellent friend. It's so good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see if if Mama C Sharp Fritz stops in. Um, so there we go. There's right. We and we already have this event handler thing that's happening when the on click and it expands and collapses these. It'd be really cool if we had a, a a slick CSS animation to work on those. But no, we don't. Um, so that expand collapse comes out of here. There it is. So this is the expand collapse right there. So if we're going to raise an event out of right clicking on that image and having it expand or collapse, we need to do a little, little more than just this. Right? So I'm going to move this event handler into a, a formal method so we can start to add some more features to it um, because we need to raise that event information. Copper Beardy was working on Orchard Core. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Does that have a CSS animation? Don't that have... Don't have that CSS animation yet. Uh, here we go. Let me let me do this. Let me drop in Hugo's comment here. Let's not have that CSS animation yet, but since the component is also customizable, some resourceful you individual could do that or even create a PR for it. Um, you're right. And that type of theming would be very cool to be able to add after the fact. There's definitely something to that that we, we need to think about. Um, right, what do you think, chat room, of being able to theme these components? Add CSS features to them easily with some sort of a template or something, I don't know. Let me know. What do you think? Um, so, all right, let me move this on click handler so that we can make this a little bit more uh, feature feature rich. So let's call this uh, handle node expand, right? And I'm going to go into the the partial class here, the base for this. Add an event for this, right? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, uh, mm, yeah, let's put event handlers down here. Look, I'm look, Ma, I'm creating a region. Ma, I'm creating a region. What do you think, chat room? Regions in code, good thing, bad thing. Ma, I like the regions. We love the regions. Um, so let me create. Uh, public void handle node expand right and that's the right signature for this there it is um, and uh, what do we, well first things first we want to say expand expanded equals not expanded right and we need to include a tree node event handler for that event that well we do have a tree node event handler for tree node expanded on the tree view so we need to define that event tree node event handler tree node tree node event handler come on you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna show me this are you tree node event args Right. Uh, da -da -da. What is on tree node event args? Provides data for the tree node check changed, node collapsed, data bound, expanded, populate. Okay, great. Uh, what's in it? Um, properties. Node. Gets the node that raised the event. Great. What's a node? 
It's a web control. Crap. Crap. Do I think the code implementing regions in Visual Studio has regions within it? Yes. No, I don't know. Did web forms support theming like that or theme packs type resources? It does. They called them skins. And nobody, not a lot of folks wrote them. But with CSS themes, very much a thing, bootstrap themes, different CSS frameworks that you can download and apply themes immediately to your website, here in 2020, I think that's something that would be very cool to be able to support. A tree node that raised the event. Uh, okay. And the... No, that's the collapse. What's a tree node? Look at this. We're going to create. end up creating this whole uh, hierarchy here. Not terrible, but terrible. Um... Hmm. So this is the control itself. What do we think? Do we cut the blue wire or do we cut the red wire? Hmm. So it's got a couple different constructors. I don't really want to emulate the constructors. I really want to emulate just the properties. Because I... Do. If you're, I don't, this comes back to one of the tenets of this, do we support, do we completely replicate the API or, or do we just try to emulate the markup? Because you can't add, I suppose you probably could. Is the web forms tree node component equivalent to our is the web forms tree view tree node control equivalent to our component? Yes. Yes. There is a depth here, and we do have a depth. That's something that <laughs> we added, but Let me add some value. we need to be able to support. <laughs> Copper Beardy with the cheer. One, two, three. Thank you. Appreciate the kind cheer. Um, and we'll make a donation to code.org. Um, Eternal Dev Coder asks, and it's not a bad question. Are regions in code bad practice? So, um, and, and there's code folding in other editors, right? The concern is when these are collapsed as somebody who isn't familiar with this code, you could go scrolling through here and completely miss. Where's the event handlers? This doesn't have any event handlers. I don't know what it is and not see them. That's not wrong. Blazer Mr. Magoo makes a further point, a good point there, that regions are kind of a, a code smell. If you need to break up your class because it has so much code that you need to break up how it's organized so that it's easier to detect and read through and consume the various parts of this it might make sense to take this and put it in a separate file so that you don't inadvertently break things in one part of the component and not uh, the other while you're editing code so, there's things there that make sense. Definitely something to consider. It's, and it's not a bad practice. There's just a lot of developers that don't like uh, regions. So, excuse me. Um, let me just check on something here. Da, 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 da. Okay, we're good. We're good. It is a divisive topic, yes, like tabs and spaces. Line feed versus carriage return line feed. Yeah, similar types of debate. Um, 
adding a component adding a component to this it's not easy to just do in blazer to have a collection of components and say render all of these here am i am i getting away with that from my tree view because i have this nodes feature here I don't think you can take a render fragment and just add something to it, can you? Protopoly.com, good morning. Right? I don't, can you do that? Um, come on. Uh, void food? No, foo. Right? I don't... Can I, what can I add here? Yeah, it's a, it, it's a delegate. It's already there. I, I don't think I can add new features to it. You can use regions inside methods. You absolutely can. It is a bad practice. Right? You can do that. It's a... It makes your code really ugly. So the concern, the, the question is, if we allow folks to new up, to create node objects, they're going to want to be able to add those to the tree view. So how do you add them to the tree view? Right, we kind of are in, in mm, mm. we're gonna need to be able to data bind to these at some point as well. Oh boy. Hmm. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? The static scenario is no problem. We just render what's there. If we're adding nodes programmatically, well, I guess we need to do a for loop then. We could do a for loop over it. Oh, I don't want to go through the builder and add those by hand. You worked with someone who had regions everywhere, for even for one line of code? Okay, DOM effects. Let me highlight that. That, that is crazy. I do not blame you on that one. That is... That is a terrible thing to consider. Ooh. That, that, that's too much, right? Um, I, that's, I think that's along the same lines of folks that... Um, folks that create interfaces for too many things. Ooh. You may, we will need to bo support both. You're right. So what if we did... What if we did... Play? So right now, nodes is a, col is a render fragment. Go back over to here. Nodes is a collection of tree node objects that represents the root node of the tree view control. What if... Let's take a look at that. Maybe we can get out of this. Maybe we can get out of this somehow. Yes, we can. 
What if nodes isn't a render fragment? It's a collection of tree nodes. So what if we take what we started with nodes and we have it also implement, right? It implements I collection. What if we have it implement I list of tree node and we just render its child contents? That wouldn't be too bad. We could do that. Protopoly has coffee. Well, thank you. Did you bring some for the rest of the kids? Did you? I mean, honestly, if you're going to take off and go get coffee, bring some back for the rest of us. And then? Uh, the cream and sugar. And then? Some people like tea. Right? Tea. So, let me know. Eh, call us back. So. <laughs> So, um, Blazer Mr. Magoo, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Oh, don't! Eternal Dev Coder makes a very good point there. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, don't forget the Danish. And um, uh, Boom Boom's going to be along with uh, that cup of tea. <laughs> That's a programmer joke. Where's Where's our friend Dryad Tea when when we're making a tea joke? Never mind. Fine. Um, oh, crumpets for the Brits. That's a good idea. Uh, you wish Mil uh, Microsoft still sent you the cup of tea for your first commit for, to Rosalind? That was. That was really neat when they used to do that. Um, there was... Oh, and some G Fuel for Hugo. Yes. The, Microsoft used to do a thing um, for the Rosalind project, right? That's the compiler for C Sharp and Visual Basic. Um, when open source commits, if you send a pull request... For, to the Rosalind compiler and it was accepted, they would send out a ceramic mug that said cup of tea in C sharp, right? Like you see there. Uh, right? Like like Boom Boom is referencing here. Um, but here's what we did that made it just a little bit special. When you made your commit, of course, in Git, there's a SHA hash, right? A very long, I think it's like, what? Is it 16 or 32 character hexadecimal number? Not only would they send you out that cup of tea, but they would engrave on the mug the shah hash of your PR that was accepted. Really, really cool. Um, yeah, the hash of your pull request. Neat stuff. All right. So here's what we can do, friends. Right here's where here's where our unit tests are gonna save us. I, I love this. This is where we're going to do some refactoring so that we, we can support passing those tree node events along. Um, are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you watching? Are you ready for this? We're going to... I hope you're ready. I hope you're watching. Are you watching? Are you paying attention? Are you, look at me. Look right here. Okay? Do you see what I'm saying here? Look. Look here. Okay? Look into my eyes. You watching? We're going to refactor this and introduce that tree node collection so that we can have pointers to each of the individual tree nodes. It's all going, also going to help us when we get to being able to data bind this collection. Okay? Um, and because we have unit tests, as we refactor, those tests should still work. Blazer Mr. Magoo, of course, wasn't watching. And then the unit test should continue to work, I hope. So let's do this. Let's create a tree node collection object that will host the group of tree nodes. And then... Our unit test should continue to pass and we'll swap it out. We're, right, we're gonna, do, we're gonna do like the Indiana Jones swap out thing, right? Can, can I find that real quick on, on the YouTubes? Indiana Jones. Uh, right, the golden idol swap. Not swap meat. Right, when how we whoop this thing right here. That's six minutes, dear lord. This forty nine seconds of Indiana Jones here, and an advertisement. Really, I've got a, a 
We're not watching your advertisement, Geico. I'll wait till you're done. I'm not going to give you the luxury of that. Unit tests, indeed, Copper Beardy. They're the best part. Here we go. Our hero, Indiana. He's going to take that tree node collection, that nodes element that we're supporting right now. Oh, my. Measure out, make sure he's got the right interface there inside that, that bag of dust. And our hero, Indiana. Ready? This is what we're going to do. And... That's right. Come on. Come on, swap it out. And now we have a tree node collection. And the unit tests should all work. And if the tree node unit tests don't work... Bad things happen. This is what happens when you don't pass your unit test. So we're going to fix that. What do you think? Can we do this? Someone didn't version their API. I agree, Hugo. Chris Jones is here. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon, my friend. Sorry, Geico. You're not a stream sponsor. We will not play your ad. That's right. Geico. Call me. No. I... Um, all right. Let's do this now. So there are some properties, some methods that we may need to implement here to get this working. Um, but I'm feeling it. I think we can do this. Let's do this. Um, it, it, right, this is, this is kind of weird. But we're going to do it anyway. So this is a Trino collection class. Da, da, da. Um... Sure, it's a public class, but we are not going to let anybody else create it outside of our project here. So we'll make the constructor uh, internal, so it's just ours. Uh, hey, friends, can you help me out here for a second? I've I've just received... Uh, <laughs> I, I've just received some information, and I need your help to pull a whammy here. Can we do this? Can we have some fun? Um, today is... Scott! It's his birthday. Can you go over to Twitter and wish happy birthday with the biggest, ugliest, goofiest gifts? Saying happy birthday to Scott Hanselman. RPF! Rocket Propelled Freeman! Uh, gritty? What gritty? There is no gritty today. I've got my Stark Industries shirt. So make sure you say a, a big happy birthday to our friend Scott Hanselman. All right. Hey, Scott. Him! Happy birthday, Scott. Somebody clipped that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, I've got my phones blowing up. The internal team discussion channel is uh, people saying, Happy birthday, Scott! Um, so let's do this. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to keep an eye on things. So many things. All the things. Um, Slevin's Heaven is here. Hello. Good to see you. Look at that. Already got the TwitchCon Europe 2020 badge. I need to get my tickets to TwitchCon as well. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, look at that. Um, so here's... Uh, what are we going to do? I want to implement iList, right? iList of type tree node, because it only has a collection of tree node objects. So let me implement that. And we've got all these things. I'm just going to delegate it to an internal list. But for the purposes of matching this interface, I think, I think we've got a lot of those things. And we'll figure out which ones we're missing and reintroduce here. Um, I hate trying to replicate this, but let's see if it works. Yes, our Flyers. My Philadelphia Flyers beat those always tough Pittsburgh Penguins last night. Uh, no, 
Not too bad. So we need to implement that, but I'm going to create a private uh, a private list of type tree node. We'll call it nodes, and that's a new list. And let's start implementing some of these things. Uh, this, right, on the get, we are going to return uh, nodes index. Set, we're going to do nodes index, and we're just delegating to that internal collection here. Uh, equals value. Right, so that's a regular get set property for this. Right, and this is, you'll see this called an indexer because we're referencing an index and this will allow us to reference the tree node collection and put some sort of a thing after it, right? So if I have this, I, I don't care, I'm just creating a method here. Um, I can say new tree node collection um, like that. And because I've written this indexer here, if you're not familiar with this C-sharp syntax, I can now put square brackets and access items as though that it was an array, a, a collection here that I can grab individual items out of. So that's what this property syntax right here is. There you go. Um, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> what what's up, uh, Sleventh Heaven? What do you got? Trying to decide whether you should go. Oh, to TwitchCon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Moz, thank you so much for the clip. Yeah, TwitchCon EU. Happy birthday, Scott. <laughs> Somebody clipped that. <laughs> All right. Nice. Um, so that takes care of that count. Well, the count is really easy. We're just going to return. Uh, come on. Right. Nodes. Count. There we go. That was easy. Is read only. Is read only. I don't know how. No, it's not read only. So I'm going to force that to be a return false. Add a new tree node item. Well, it, it gets appended to the end of the collection. All right, so we'll just say nodes. Add that item. There we go. Uh, clear, that's easy. All right. Nodes clear. Right, there is a clear, so we're good there. There's an add at here, the signature we should support. Um, I don't think add at is in here. Well, insert does that. But let me add that signature and we can come back to this. Uh, public void add at int index tree node item. We'll figure that out. Do, 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 contains, right? Contains is this thing here? Yes. So that's going to be just uh, nodes, contains, item, right? Hey, Jean Valjean is here. Good morning, well, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Yeah, F1 weekend at the same time in Amsterdam is uh, gonna make TwitchCon kinda, kinda nutty. There is a copy to, we do have copy to, but the copy to is to a tree node, is to a tree node array. Oh yeah, uh, that's a thing, okay. Um, no, we want nodes copy to array index, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Get enumerator, yeah, this is going to be, do, is it gonna be yield or return? Let's do return. It might need to be a yield. Index of, right? 
Yep, there's one of those. So return um, nodes index of item. So insert isn't a thing here, but insert does the same thing as add at. So I'm going to return, I don't even need to return, I just need to do it, right? Uh, index, no, like that. Found out where your clip button went. Oh, oh no. Could be an issue if not booked it. I, so I've booked a hotel reservation, but I need like an extra day out of them. Because my, my projected flight home would be Monday morning. Otherwise, it gets a little weird being there Sunday night. You know what I mean? Um, like flying out on a Sunday night. Could be peculiar. Um, remove and remove at. Okay. So those are both a thing here, so I should be able to just delegate. Now! Uh, nodes. Right, nodes. Come on now, Jeff. Like that. And this one I should be able to do nodes. Remove at index. Isn't that what we did up there? Return uh, nodes getting in there. Right. So that should handle. Uh, oh. That handles the kind of default collection interaction things. So, what else do we have to do here? Um, count is synchronized. Really? Uh, okay, the indexer and sync root. I'm going to avoid those for right now. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, add at, we know, is just a redirect from the... In Let me turn that around. Right? Insert. Let's do this. Yeah. Index. Item. And let's take add at. And make this a call into insert index. Item. All right. So I think we have that working. Um, now, cast of type as parallel. Oof. I, I don't want to deal with the extension methods. Explicit interface. Uh, I state manager is tracking view state no load view state no save view state no track view state no um, I think that's I think that's okay I think we've got what we need I don't think thinking through that index list tree nodes have child tree nodes in order for me to get a count, right? Because it's a hierarchical, hierarch, it's a hierarchical collection. Gosh, it's so hard for me to say that. Um, but the tree nodes should know who each other's parent is for rendering. We're gonna have to change the way this renders. Oh boy. Let's have. Uh, take care, Sean. Great to see you today. So let's make the tree node collection. Let's make this a dot razor dot cs. And we will also add a razor component for, well, if I make it tree node collection, 
Yeah. We can do that. So let's get rid of this. Because we're going to end up doing something with this. Um, we're going to need to say uh, inherits, um, right? Uh, what is it? Base web forms component. Uh, we might need to do the model binding one here. Um, but let's start there. We're going to make you a partial class. Base web forms component. There we go. Okay. So now I have a component that has all of these features. The way that the tree tree view uses it, right? Uh, here. It's a render fragment of type nodes. So let's change that from a render fragment to a tree node collection. Um, and right, just like our tree node has child content like this, our tree node collection needs to have child content as well. Let me create a region around this. Uh, collection features, right? Something like that. So, hey, there it goes. All right. So now we have component features. So there's the render fragment for our child content. Come on. There we go. I, I thought I just... Thank you. Um, so now I should be able to put... I should be able to put... Right, my nodes should still continue to work in there. Uh, Zenark Alucard, welcome. You're a C sharp newbie. Is it best to just follow the Microsoft docs for .NET? Mm. They'll get you some of the stuff. They're pretty good. There's other places you can learn about it as well. Uh, is it necessary to work on Windows for .NET, or is it cool if I work on Linux? You are absolutely encouraged to be able to work on Linux with Visual Studio Code and C Sharp and the various .NETs. Um, the team's done a lot of work to enable that workflow. We spent the entire month of October, actually, working in Ubuntu Linux with Visual Studio Code and .NET Core. You should have a tremendous experience working in that environment, if that's what you enjoy. And you can deploy wherever you'd like, Windows, Mac, Linux, it's up to you. Um, so I have my child content without adding anything else, right? If I go back to my tree view, that should just work, right? Shouldn't it? Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's try running our tests. Here we go. You're welcome, Zenark. There we go. Um, I'm going to specifically zoom in on the uh, tree view here. So we have just that on a playlist. Right. Can I rename the playlist? Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follows in arc. Uh, configure run settings. Eh, whatever. Um, okay, I just I thought I end up whatever. Run those. Right. 
Let me just dock that right here. So just swapping it out so that we have, instead of a render fragment, a real component there, this should work. Right? Uh, maybe. Or not. Excuse me. Um, well, that didn't work. All right, what did we do? What do we got to fix here? So, actually, so we've specified that nodes... Do we have to do it this way? No. Right? Um, because we've... This is, this is kind of weird. So, tree node collection... Oh! Well, maybe that's it. Put that back in there. That looks like it's going to work. But if I go back over here, I'm not actually rendering the child content yet. So what if I do... And I'm not... Re uh, well, that should cascade down into those other things from my nodes, right? Um, I want to just emit child content. Does that work? Because I'm creating this hierarchy. I'm recreating this hierarchy, right? Whatever nodes are inside of, I want to output that child content, and it should it, it should output the, the child elements there if we have a static set of nodes defined here. Let's see. No. All right. This is going to take a little bit more work. So I'm not getting. Let's let's see if we can simplify even further here. Uh, thank you for the follow, Eight Bit Taco. Welcome. It's good to see you, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Let me start with the simple test over here because this one's clearly right. It's not rendering any of my content. So the child content that we're trying to render here. Right. Um, if I look at tree node collection, not this one. Let's. If I look at the tree view, um, might need to iterate over the collection and call build render tree with the current builder. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, I don't want to do that. Instead of calling this component here, can I do? Do I need to do something like, uh... Now, see, it's picking up all my collection stuff to interact with. Um, build render tree, right? Oh. So we are working on a series of components. There we go. It's the render tree builder. So maybe I need to call the tree node collection. Right. Um, so we are working on a series of Blazor components. These are components that can be used uh, for web development. And now we're learning for maybe even, maybe even mobile development that are inspired by the default web forms controls that are available so that hopefully we give folks the ability to migrate their applications oh, at least their markdown mark their markup from ASP.NET web forms those millions of applications that are out there to blazer and the modern user interface framework so can I go yeah um, right so I have the nodes and I can't access the build render tree over there because it's hmm. it's if I look at the tree node collection this implements base web forms component which is component base and that doesn't it have 
build render tree on this. Right? Void foo. This dot. Yeah, it's there. Oh, but it's protected. What if we did this? Um, I feel like I'm overthinking this. So I'm inside of this component. Right? And I'm literally just trying to pass it down and say, include this inside of this thing. And we do that with our tree nodes. If it has child content, right, we iterate through. It's a render fragment here. We say at child content. And that's a, it's a render fragment in Blazor speak. It's a, it's a, method that we're calling, right, that allows us to say, go output this content here. Um, what we're trying to do is have... Um, I can't just say child content because I've declared that I'm receiving something. Right? I don't have child content as part of this. If I go over here, right? I have like that. If I go back now, because I've declared that a tree view, where'd it go? Has a tree node collection. Yes, child content is key. <laughs> well played, boom boom. In a family friendly stream, child content is okay. <laughs> Um, so specifying that from the tree view over here saying child content it isn't going to include my nodes collection so this isn't going to pick up and have it as part of this Crap! That worked! Okay. That was unexpected. Wow. Um. Alright, we might be onto something. Um. Okay, let me close that one. Don't need that, don't need that. So now the question is, my tree node collection that is just saying output the child content here if there is any child content. Look at that, yeah. Um, that was completely unexpected. The child content in our sample, right? If I go over to one of these one of these demos that I have, right? Uh, go to test. Nope, not gonna work. Can I go to that test? Nope, can't do that one either. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Over here. So this is the way the markup looks. Come on, that should go away. You're not gonna do that for me, are you? 
doesn't... Why doesn't it like that nose? Nodes isn't... Nodes isn't a tree node collection. What did you clip there? Oh, no. It worked! Uh, yeah, because this isn't a thing. Nodes isn't an element. Let's think about this. Um, nodes is... In order for nodes to work... In order for nodes to work, we need to define a razor component called nodes that has that tag. We can't stub out and swap the tag on it. The property that we defined for tree node collection, even though we gave it the field name nodes, it doesn't know what to do with. Is, it's that's meme potential. Are you kidding? What did you do? What did I do? What am I? Who am I kidding? Oh, oh crap! That worked. <laughs> oh. Yes, there's there's a meme there. Every developer ever says Hugo. Stream, what are you doing? Yeah, I think so. If this returns a render fragment, well, so I think we need a nodes. We need a, I think we need a nodes component that when it renders adds the tree nodes to the tree node collection. And the nodes has just child content. So then tree node collection isn't a component. It's just a... Right? Get rid of this. Right? So that goes away. So that this is just a collection. And if we have a nodes element, can we access the nodes from C-sharp code? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, let me show that real quick. What did I call it? Sample tree view. And now I've added The music sounds a bit off. Mm. I haven't dropped any frames. Let me know. So it is ex the the node collection is accessible, but I think I think we can set up a a dual thing here so that we can interact with this. Oh yeah, it does. Oh, it slows down? Mm. I don't know. Let me collapse this. Let's create the nodes component. Add uh, yeah, new item. Razor component. Nodes. Thank you for the follow. Is that Gigi? Welcome. Um, okay. 
So this I'm going to want to output just the child content. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. You have to give a presentation on doing better unit testing for your team this week, and writing out the presentation makes you feel entirely unqualified to teach. Malfunct. Hello, my friend. No, don't feel that you're just fine. Um, so I need to have if I if I set up on this one. Um, so if this has a parameter, right? Um, uh, public. Right, it's render fragment child content. Right, that's the magic one that'll show you these things. Uh, um, is that uh, Paul asks uh, that sales have started for TwitchCon in Amsterdam? Yes, I'm planning on going. I have I have a couple things that I'm trying to set up there as well. MBB, good morning. Um, it didn't. Why didn't we get the redemption overlay? Hang on. I didn't get the redemption to pop up. We should have heard that. Um, MBB has redeemed a request that I go to to Darth Vader mode for five minutes. Friends, I'm go going to and Stelzy. Steel to seventy nine just resubscribed for fifteen months. Thank you so much for the resub. Fifteen months of support. We will make a donation to Code.org. Thank you so much. Now you can't change the font to Wingdings. It's not supported in Visual Studio, which is kind of weird. All right, let's do this. I think, let me head over to voice mod. There we go. I don't think, where is it? Darth Vader mode, this one. It does have an ambient effect. Well, we'll use that too. Stop the music. And... There we go. Now you can hear me. Ready? Let's find... Yes, it is I, Darth Fritzy Fritz. Let's do this. Five minutes on the clock. With the, uh, the Imperial Invasion here, or something. I don't know. Alright, let's do this. So we have nodes, and the, right, we know what the child content of this is. Um, if we have that tree node collection and we pass it down, we should be able to add each of the nodes to it. Yes, this is very classy. This is the way we teach people these days. Voice of something. Uh, yes. Yes, you can redeem and ask me to change my voice several different ways. Absolutely. <laughs> no, that's a thing. Alright. Um, so, on initialize. Uh, no, it'll be on parameter set. There we go. Fine. Going to be that way, are we? On parameters set. Really? Thank you. Um, I think this is a protective, isn't it? And it returns void. We mean not valid. There we go. Good. Darth Fritzy sounds like a character to a sequel to Spaceballs. Yes, that's my, uh, my cousin, Dark Helmet. <laughs> no. Um, okay, let's see. So, 
If it's not in Vader voice... Well... You're not wrong here. If it's not in Vader voice, are you even really streaming? Yes. Yes it is. Darth Fritzy Fritz, were you a backup dancer for Marky Mark? That Marky Mark punk can't hold my lightsaber. Actually, I have a lightsaber. It's just behind me there on the shelf. A real lightsaber. It's a... what we got from Disney and the thing they have there. So, uh, thank you for the follow, Eclipse X. Welcome in. It's so good to see you. You caught me during Vader mode. It's a thing. Totally a thing. I don't think it's during the on parameter set I need to do the nodes. Um, I should receive the parent object, the tree view, because the tree view... Over here. Yes. Parent tree view is what I'm receiving. So here I'll create another parameter. Um, tree view, uh, I'll call it parent tree view, because I'm not very imaginative and now I need properties. This is a cascading parameter called parent tree view. So now I have that, um, and actually, do I need, do I need to do anything with it here? Maybe if I have a notes collection, I'll want to output and render those. Yeah, well, we need to do the data binding there. So that would be a thing. But for here, I don't think I need to change anything. Does this still work? Let's make sure my tests work. If I go too much further in modifying how this interacts, all the things we want it to do... Hmm. Hmm. Yes, run the test. The build succeeded. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting with... Go back to Transylvania. Test run finished, so my tests still work. Okay, we're doing okay here. The next thing is to to load up that nodes collection from uh, the, the static nodes that are defined there. Oh, it's time to stop already? I was having so much fun. All right, fine. Uh, but thanks so much for the redemption. That's better. It's fun when we when I change voice like that. I've, and there's a couple of them out there. You can make me sound like hamsters for a bit. You can turn me over into uh, party mode. Party mode's fun, too. Um, but I think somebody said we should save party mode for when the hype train comes. So... But maybe we'll save it for that. Um, okay, so if I have the tree nodes output, they're, if they're statically in the collection, I can add them back to the node collection as they're being rendered, I think. Right, because if... Let me go back here. So there's that tree node collection. There we go! Uh, Vim for 15 minutes? No! No! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my! Oh no! <laughs> you have no idea what you're dealing with. I. No. No. Oh dear lord! <laughs> Vim is amazing. But I, I feel like you've just, you've wounded me here, friends. <laughs> Gosh. All right. All right. So, uh, 
I love showing this. I, I, I think it's great to be able to show that that Ver, Vim works great, that VI, uh, and Vim works great when um, coding with .NET. I'm going to get the music playing again in the background. Um, because .NET now really does support uh, any text editor that you'd like. Um, do I have... I know it's installed and running here because Git brings it up. Um, right when, if I were to do, uh, write like a git commit dash M, um, right, it opens VI here. That's VI. How do I get that one? Right, how do I... Right, what's the editor it's using there? Try Vim. Yeah, I just tried Vim and it... No. There's, um... How we do... Isn't there a thing to see the... Uh, git text editor? There's a configuration of where it's... Where it's written. And I want to be able to just pick that up. Uh, here we go. Git config global core dot editor right there. And why would anybody choose Emacs? Sorry. Um, so can I say git config? And I should have set this up earlier. My apologies. Um, I want to get all. Mm, uh, yeah. uh, no. Oh, dummy. Forgot the git config. No. Uh, I want to use the global. I want to show what's the value. It's not like... Uh, it's not that, is it? Nope. Nope. I want to see what the list of it is. Is It's in the git install directory. Gvim. I don't think I installed Gvim. Nope. It, it came with Git when I installed. I mean, it's just there. List all dash L. There we go. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that's my my key. Where's editor? GPG program, but where's where's the editor? Uh, that was global. Let's do dash dash system. Uh, I don't see editor here either. All right. Uh, anything else we're missing here? What if I just do git config dash l? No, oh, that's something. Uh, and I'm looking for editor here, so we can... I don't see editor. There's GPG. Anybody see editor? Git bash. Uh, can I just do that? Nope. Um, well, that worked. Okay. Nobody tell our friend Sue's Hinton that I am floundering here trying to get into into git. Oh man. It's not gonna give me tab completion, is it? Uh oh wait, 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 wait. 
There it is. Uh, source. Uh, I was down in here. Oh, jeez. You're not going to give me the... There we go. Thank you. C program files get user bin vim exe says blazer mr magoo you're not actually going to start that for me are you and it opens in a new window um why didn't it Because I'd really like to use it here as part of right from PowerShell, no less. Um, <laughs> nah, you know what? We'll just... I'll be over here. That's fine. Um, so where was I? Uh, I was going to be working in... I'm going to look back at, at Visual Studio. Or did I close Visual Studio? I guess I closed it. We were looking at, I was gonna look at the tree nodes. So let me do this. Let me scoot this over here so I can see the unit tests working over here and I can bounce into those. Um, thank you. Um, so I need to be in tree node razor. Let me start the 15 minute clock. There we go. So in tree node razor, Right? Oh, look at that. Um, so what I was going to say is we need to override the on parameter set so that we add to the tree node collection of the parent tree view this node. We need to add it to the end. Right? So let's open here. Um, I believe this is public void, right? Uh, override void. Uh, on parameters set. Oh no, I don't know how to go back. There we go, thank you. Right? Write that out, and this didn't rerun the tests. Um, tell you what, I'm gonna do this. Uh, that? Nope, wrong way. Um, this way. And I'm gonna just make sure that it builds in this one. So, here, source, uh, .NET, watch build you're kidding uh oh yes now dotnet watch build so i can make sure that it actually builds and it isn't getting grouchy about this over here can i change access modifiers so this should be protected all right So that should rebuild, there it goes, and, right? Okay, good, zero errors. Um, this one, uh, yeah, do the .NET watch test, will you fella? So here, when the parameters are set, I want to add to the parent tree viewed's uh, uh, node collection, right? I want to add the, this node, Right? There can be a timer in Vim. I'm not familiar with it. Um, okay, so the tree node collection is in tree view. What do you mean more doesn't exist? Does less exist? Yeah. I tell you. Uh, tree view razor CS. 
So I'm going to add two nodes. So tree view nodes add. And I know there's a way to do a file explorer in Vim. Um, I just don't have it handy. So let's do this. Let's, yeah, let's add here. That's a big tab. Parent tree view nodes add this. Okay, so this should recompile properly and be happy, right? So, so does the unit test. That built properly and the test run, they should still run. Oh my God! Okay, that's not a thing. It didn't work. So it's telling me and then? we got a problem. That's what the end then. Oh, wait a sec. Can I do this now? No. Let's zoom in here a little bit and see what happened. Um, object reference, tree node parameters, tree node razor 57. Okay. So let's go back over here. Ah, uh, how do you turn on line numbers in Vim? Set number. Thank you. Ah, uh, DNRC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, win the new Windows terminal is nice. Um, I wish I could have figured out how to open Vim over there, though. Okay, um, so on line 57, it's saying that that isn't a thing. It's saying parent tree view isn't a thing. Why isn't it a thing? It should have received it. Why, um... When is it setting that cascading parameter? No. It's Joker. We... No. Hmm. Thank you, Hugo. So... Uh, oh, the nodes isn't a thing. It, I didn't create that. Right? Uh, okay, so let's go back into tree view razor CS. Right? Down here, this one. New tree node collection. Now, I could have... Um, those are going to both kick off here. I could have uh, OmniSharp installed and get some type ahead completion in in Vim there. Look at that! 82 succeeded. Look at that! Love seeing that. So my unit test passed. Alright. Um, so now my nodes collection. Now we should write a unit test to verify that the nodes collection actually is loaded with those nodes. Oh boy. I don't know if we if we can access that inside of our unit test. All right, because we're not going to get the type ahead help here to see if it actually works. Um, let's go up one. Let me go over to. I want Blazor Web Forms Components Test. Okay, and I want to go into tree view, and I want to go into, yes, and let's look at simple, okay, wow, those are some ugly tabs there, friends, we'll get this, okay, so what I want to look at is on my component under test, under sample tree view, when it runs here, right? 
when I get the context for get component under test, what is this object? Can I inspect it as a tree view class and take some further steps there? So let's go check out uh, no, you, yeah, I'm over here. I've been using this one. I wanted to use Edge more and more, but we didn't. Uh, I started off on the wrong foot. Uh, Razor Components Test, right? Isn't that the name of the library that we're using here? Here it is. From our friend uh, e Eagle Hansen. Uh, let me do, 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 do. C sharp base testing. Yes. Uh, create a new, um, I was doing markup based, razor based testing is what I'm doing over here. Create a new testing component just like this. And we test it like that. Blazor test, blah, 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 blah. Rendered component. So we have an I rendered component of type. My component is what it's, that get component under test does. Do that. So that's what cut is here. It is an I rendered component of type. So what does I rendered component look like? Right? Can I inspect that? Um, where T component is type of the component. Um, is that is that our cause 17 um you're never too old to get started programming and don't worry about studying try it out see what works well for you see if it speaks to you if it's something that that moves you and you and and you're interested in because you're always going to be learning if you get in, in interested in programming there's a lot to do here um and there's all kinds of disciplines not just building components and web things like I do here on my stream. My friend Lana Lux is programming right now on her stream, another one of the live coders, and, and she's building games with Unity and building models and the various components of the characters and structures going through the games that she's building. All kinds of really great stuff there. Programming can be a tremendously fun uh, art cause. Tremendous. Um, so get component returns an I, right? I want to, I want to see the details of what that's returning, um, here, no, go away. Can I get the actual... No, can't find it. So, uh, expected HTML, HTML, markup matches, render component, right? And there's this find get changes since first render. I want to get the state of the component, right? And I would do this with IntelliSense and type through it, but somebody has me in, in uh, Vim over here. Uh, I'm going to find this. Set parameters and renders. Set changes since first render. I want to... Um, <laughs> Let me go back one. Razor test examples. Yeah, this is the same thing that I was in. Um... One of the biggest, yes, one of it, being focused is tremendous to have as a skill when you're building things as a programmer. And uh, that's what makes uh, developing and building things on Twitch su uh, such a challenge. Um, hmm. Let's do this. Let's see if we can find under the source, right? Oh, crumbs. You know what we can do? Go back over to code. Give me the code. Right? Uh, come here, you. Right, I rendered component. 
right? It's an I rendered component of a type, right? So where is that? So, oh, look at that instance. Ah. So can we, right? There I am. So can we do this? Oh, hold on. Hold on to your keister here, friends. This is going to get interesting quick. Um, can we say instance dot nodes dot count should be four. And let's see if this is going to... Well, that's not going to build because that's only building the components <clears throat> does not contain a definition for instance rats okay so oh that's yeah that's on the interface so instance should be a thing right on i rendered component right get component under test let's go back over here Um, I'm going to copy that so I have this location. Um, back up. Right, get component under test. Right? That return returned, I thought it said... Is it because we didn't specify that it's a... What if we force that to say... What if we force that to say tree view? That's the end of. Uh, no, no. Let's write that out. See what happens with that, and we will take a look. See there. Thank you so much for redeeming that. I have two items in the queue because I didn't clear out the Darth Vader. So we completed that, and yes, we did Vim for 15 minutes. Uh, nope. Ooh! Wait a sec. Was 19. So it actually did add those nodes, but it, it added them a few too many times. Hmm, okay, okay. Well... And I can go back to vi uh, to Visual Studio now. <gasps> um, I'll get better with Vim. I promise. But... And I'll figure out and get some more things set up over there for next time. But let's jump back into Visual Studio. Like, I know there's a... A... a file browser. Our friend Noopcat uses that a lot. I know there's a file browser that we can use, and I know so also know there's syntax highlighting we can turn on for C Sharp. Definitely want to check both of those out. Uh, let me go to my test explorer here. And I specifically want to grab the tests for, here it is. Right? Actually, I just want to open playlist number one. Can I do that? Where's... How do I open just playlist number one? No. No. Uh-uh. Right? How do I change my playlist in the test explorer? No. Oh, here we go. Uh, no. Because I, I want to zoom in on just that. Yeah, thank you for the shout-out to no Cat. Well, actually, that looks like it worked. I thought we just broke it. Hang on, let's back up here and take a look at that test. 
So down here, simple.razor, right? Cut instance nodes count should be four. You're telling me that worked? There you go, playlist one. It found. Uh, well, it didn't run that here. Rerun it. I want to see that fail the same way that it failed over in the... Why, why did it pass over that? Uh, let's call this uh, tree view playlist there we go um, right but it says it's not running that one well, do it again run them all why aren't you running it see look it's got the little clock why isn't it running it Right? Build clean solution. Oh, that would be cool. Blazer Mr. Magoo suggesting it'd be it'd be kinda neat if we could get a snapshot image, right? An actual GIF that we could look at. Uh, a GIF or a PNG of what the rendered component looks like. Yeah, thank you, chat room. I appreciate um I appreciate the positive words that, and the encouragement that you offer to our friend Arcos there that just joined us. That that was very kind, and, and I really appreciate. That's one of the great things about this development community here on Twitch. Very uplifting, very welcome, welcoming to new folks and encouraging folks that want to try out and get into this. Where's the sentiment? Oh my gosh! Where has the sentiment gone? You're right. Some of those things just did not start well here for us. Um... Moist Booty Boy gifted cause 017A a subscription. Moist Booty Boy gifted Thank you, MBB. That is so kind. Sending over a gift sub to our new friend. Gift subs in the channel. Holy crow! That's a lot of gift subs. Thank you so much. There's the, the sentiment analysis there in the middle. How did I miss that? Oh my goodness. Uh, here we go. So now it's running it. There's that 19 that it's putting up there because it's um, it's adding the tree notes multiple times to the collection. And thank you for the follow. Appreciate you tuning in and, and sticking around. I hope you hope you have a good time. Please feel free to ask questions. This community is very welcoming. All the, the folks here that are in chat, hanging out, watching are more than happy to help Help folks that have questions uh, on the channel. You know, maybe if we need to go down, maybe, maybe if we, no. Um, I'm just blindly saying, add this. Maybe I need to say, if parent tree view nodes contains this, if it doesn't contain this, then add it. And I should wrap that, right? And hopefully, it uh, appropriately doesn't add it a second time. So let's rerun that test. See if that blocks it from getting that weird 19 count there. Maybe we, hopefully we'll end up with four. There we go. Running the test now. Everything's compiled. See it? You even got the little spinner. <whistles> Look at that. <whistles> All right. Yes. No, that's not what I wanted. It, we got it working, right? No, that's not it either. Mm, okay, whatever. We got it working. So now it's properly adding them so that nodes collection, when it starts, um, will have the appropriate number of nodes in it. So, if it's adding it a second time to that collection, should I remove it the first time so that it has the appropriate object? No, it's the same. It's the same object. It contains this already. Don't add it again. Don't add a second copy of it. 
So I think we're okay there. All right. Um, because what I'm thinking, right? And I think you know what I, I think you know what I think you're thinking, you're thinking. Maybe. Um, is now we can go back and start talking about the events because we have the nodes in a collection where we can point to them and there's a way to look at what they are as more than just a component. So, and the whole reason we got into this thing earlier today is we wanted to be able to say the tree node expanded. So this event is a tree node event handler. The tree node event handler Right, we started walking down this. It has a tree node event args. Right? Um, I opened over here. That points to that node. And now we have that node somewhere that we can point to and say, there it is, that thing is what it was. So, the game is afoot. Let's create the tree node event args class that will have those things that we're going to be able to interact with. So nodes is, do I really even need this? Yes, no, no, maybe. Yet, yeah. mm. yet, yeah. mm. yes, yes. Because I'm going to need to update this to add handling for the data bound collection of nodes that was passed in. Yes. That's going to be a thing that we're going to need to handle. But first, the, the game is afoot. We're going to go over to the tree node collection, right? Because we've already got these things. I'm going to define next to this just because it feels like a good place to stash it. Uh, I'm going to create a class. This is going to be the tree node event arcs. Tree node event args class. And this inherits from event args. Right. Right. Um, and this contains properties. It does contain properties. Um, it contains a node that's a tree node. And it has a constructor that takes a tree node. Okay. This feels. So constructor, I used a little snippet there. C-T-O-R. So I may receive a tree node. Yes. Um, and uh, this dot node equals that node. And generate that property. Boom goes a dynamite. I don't need to say that. Why am I saying that? I shouldn't have to say that. I've got the thing that says it. You know what I mean? It's a... Uh... Boom goes a dynamite. There we go. You want to learn Java to help create and work with a Minecraft server. Arcos, absolutely that's something that there's a lot of folks talk about that. It's not something I specialize in, but you can definitely find information about how to do that. So now I have my tree node event args, which has that constructor, that property. These other things just kind of exist. I don't need to create those. So I should be able to create the on tree node expanded event on the tree view control and raise those events appropriately. Right? Now I completely forget how to do events in Razor, but that's okay. We wrote them already for the list view so I can steal how I did it over there. Uh, right? Where is it? I thought I did them for the list view. Is it down here? And over here? Blazer events. Uh, not those. Custom events. Uh, so it's an event callback of the different types of event args. And then we're just going to admit it. Oh, I end the end. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Right? Go back to that. And then that. Right? So public, and this is a parameter that you're passing in to handle those various events, because it's not a real event, it's a, it's a fake event. So tree view razor, right? Put 
put my events here. Public event handler, uh, tree node event args, and it was called on tree node expanded. On tree node expanded. Nice. Okay, so now we have that. Um, so now on the tree node itself here, when the expand happens, do you see where I'm going here, friends? <gasps> it's so good. Here, um, I can say if parent tree view on tree node expanded dot right uh is assigned what is it uh, okay i guess right i can do right i can do that can i uh oh i need to pass in yes the sender is Now let's do this. And then new tree node event args this. I think that's the thing. Ooh, the .NET user group in Portland has, uh, is that Jesse Miller coming to talk about Blazor? Neat. Uh, so that, right, these should still work here. These sh I shouldn't, I should not have broken anything. And we should be able to move on and look at some of the other events. We should be able to do the collapse. This is expanded. It's I shouldn't. Uh, I need to invoke the appropriate event because there's expanded and collapsed, right? I just need to make sure this is this is doing the thing. Do the thing. Let's go. Come on. Build it. Build it now. Come on. Let's go. What'd you do? I ran my unit tests. Um, okay, so I only want to run this if, it, it, well, if expanded is now true. No, if expanded is now, yeah, if expanded is now true. Then we're going to run that one. else we're going to say on tree node collapsed so we need to add that right that was the name of the other one no not that uh no we already got that taken care of and that one uh yeah tree node collapsed what where did i go And we'll change this to collapsed. And that should still compile and work. Hey, FanRay Media, welcome. This is Music to Code By by our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. So, that should build and run properly, right? Come on, let's go. You can do it. Run those unit tests. Build succeeded, good. So we're not actually testing that these two events are running properly, right? That the event was raised. I should write a test for those, don't you think? Right, chat room? So let me go back up, tree view, and um, I have this collapsed razor, right? That's just checking, right? When something's marked as expanded false. So what I should do is I should have a way now 
to click that. Click that element and make sure that the event was raised. You know? So let's take uh, Urban Nomad. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Now, hang on. Is Tree Node collapsed? That's. Yeah, that's an event. I need to add that event also. Right? I just have the handlers to listen for it. I need to add these as events. Right? Tree node event handler. What is tree node event handler? Um, isn't that it? Watch that be a directive that includes. Oh man. Let me get back to that. Make sure that at these. Right, verify that it's properly do, um, doing the thing. On. Yes. There, look at that. Um, so on expanded, because this is not expanded. Um, uh, let's, let's call this uh, record expanded. Right, because we're going to just create a little... Can it generate it? Nope. Nope. Uh, record expanded uh, object sender tree node event args args right and private bool expanded uh, false right Expanded true, and let's uh, also record the node that did it. Right? So I should be able to say expanded node equals args dot node. Be able to have that. And actually, I don't even need to say expanded true, right? I can actually jump in and check that node directly. Ooh. Um, so how do I click that now? Right, how do I click that expand feature? No, no, there it is. Get rid of this, get rid of that over here. I like to keep my tabs a little bit tidy, right? So razor-based testing, razor test examples. How do I click something in here? Because I want to click that image, that expand button that it's going to be a plus image. How do I actually click that thing? Come on, show me click. No. Um, uh, set parameters and render. No. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I want to, right, I want to do the interaction. I actually want to click the thing. After first render, blah, blah, blah. Render, 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 render. No. Verify, invoke. No. I'm not submitting something. Hmm. Well, if I'm finding something, can I, can I say dot click? Let's see. So the one that's collapsed is the top level. So that should be the only image, right? There's only one image. Yeah this one and that anchor I should be able to click right so anchors that's the first one there it is this uh, yeah um, so I should be able to say anchors first the href is home? No. It should be a... Uh, 
Hmm. I think they're... I think I should be, right? If I say anchors first... Yeah, I can click it right there. Right? That's something that I can do coming out of Angle Shark, and I can pass in. So, but that's not... I don't know if it's the right one that I'm clicking there. Let me go run this. Actually, it should. I should be able to just refresh, right? Is that going to give me the thing? No. Yeah. Uh, let's restart it. Take a look-see here. Tree view. Um... Right, so when it's like that. Right, so here's the first TD, ahref, JavaScript void. There's the image inside of it. And it's on, it's on the click of this anchor, right? Is where the tree node expands and collapses. Here. So it's this one we want to click. Okay. Go back to my collapsed sample. So find all anchors where it has an href and, oh, and it does not have an image. Ah, so we want the opposite of that. So let's call this uh, let's call this expando because that sounds weird and cool. So I'm going to find no find all anchors where it has an href and it has an image inside of it. So we should find just that first one, and I'm going to say. Um, first off, let's say first or default, so we get an object, right? And expando should not be null, right? That should definitely be a thing. Uh, we're testing this one. Run that again. Should be good there. And now, Eternal Dev Coder, we should be able to hit that click event and see it expand and hopefully, and then inspect our record expanded here, right? So if I say expando click, um, mouse event args dot empty, right? Just now I should be able to say expanded node should not be null. Uh, expanded node. Why don't you know what depth is? That's a tree node. Right? That should be my tree node. Right? Why didn't you jump into that? Tree node. Oh, you know why? Because I made depth protected. We're going to publicize that now. Uh, I'd like to scroll, please. Uh-oh. Did I... Whew! Okay. Uh, dot depth should be zero, because it's the root element. Why you know like this now? What? What do you mean can't convert from system event args? This should work now. Come on. Come on. We got this. We don't got this. <sighs> uh, no. Byte does not contain a definition for should be. Uh, really? Oh, 
my. I know. Fine. Y you want to be that way? You want to be that way? Run that again. There we go. We got this. We got this, friends. So this should identify that the expanded node, the node that was expanded, was raised here, and it is the zero width, and it did pass. Let's make sure that that fails when it isn't that one. Right, let's make sure that it properly comes back and says, nope, I found an element, and it has a node depth of zero, so that we can touch that. The Lord of Sound, welcome. There we go. And it failed because, yep. Um, if that works, maybe write our own extension wrapper to handle the byte type. Actually, I would, I would uh, go back to our friend uh, Eagle here, and right, he's got should be right. He's. Uh, uh, is it on the extensions? Where's the various should be's? I would put in it. I would update and add that. I'm a fellow code project. Yes, I do write content for code project. Yes. So that should run now, and I should be able to run all of these. And now we're raising events for the expand and collapse. This is really good, right? Now we've got that capability built. Now we can move over and look at the, it was checkbox was the third event that we wanted to hook up. We should be able to wire up that event as well and be able to inspect. Yeah, I thought it was something, well, it, it is, he, he did bring in, should be, see this? Um, here. It is part of should be extensions in shouldly, but should be, it's saying it doesn't have support support for byte, and I don't see it in there. Decimal, double, float, long, short, short, long, int. Yeah, byte isn't in here. So I would go back to shouldly and add this. Um, okay. So that now, right, verifies that the expand event works. What was the last one? Tree node check changed event. Okay. So when somebody hits the checkbox, when there is a checkbox, we want to raise that event. Tree node check changed. So going back over to tree view. Uh, tree node event args. And it was that. We also need events to go with these. Um, so that's on the tree view the tree node itself. So there's the checkbox. We want to have, where is it? Here it is, here's the checkbox. Uh, is, is it gonna be on change, on click? I think it's, I think it's going to be on change is what we want. Handle checkbox. Right? Now the question is, what does that on, it's change event args. Okay. Uh, here we go. Public void, handle checkbox, and it's, Let's take a look again. Change event args. So there's going to be, right? Uh, ob right, uh, sender. Um, 
change event args args. Now, what do we know? The value is on that. That's the value from the checkbox. Hmm. Yeah, that shouldly isn't hang picking up the byte with the generic because it's a value type, the, right? The generic won't handle the value types, the simple value types. Okay. Um, is it going to be on change? The sender is a... This is interesting, right? Um, is are both of these? No, it doesn't like that. Let me look up that. Let's take a looky at the on change event with a checkbox. No, how to get the checkbox value if it is checked? I don't want the value, but I want I want to yeah on change. It's taking the event args. interesting like that right that feels like weird syntax there um, right to do something like this That's kind of weird. That's a little weird. Right? Uh, I mean, I guess it's doing a thing there, right? Your stream keeps freezing. Oh, no. Somebody get Twitch on the phone. Code rushed! Oh my gosh! Code rushed rated my stream with 10 views. Hello, hello, my friend. Thank you so much for that raid. Welcome in, raiders. It's so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz, and we're writing some Blazor components that that are inspired by the default WebForms components. WebForms controls that came with ASP.NET. Um, how's it going, Mark? How are things over there on your channel? Look at those... Look at those fine blue bearded fellows that code that copper bearding shared with us. Code Rushed, as you know, is a, another member of the live coders team. Um, gosh, you've been building with TypeScript and Signal R and and some really cool technologies over there on on the Code Rush channel for for a while. Really neat stuff over there. Oh, Flav Creations, this is Twitch speaking. Uh, I'm having a problem. You're not hiring. Oh, you're not hiring. No. Oh. Thanks, Flav. That didn't go anywhere. Um, so I should be receiving the object here. I wonder what it looks like, though, when I get to here. Right? I want to put a break in here so I can see what this is. Let's debug. Right? Uh, yeah, this has a checkbox on it, so let's debug this and take a look at exactly what what we get when we hit that point. So, have a good one, Webface. Oh, I do have a bad joke horn. Absolutely, I've got two of them. See that? I've got the sad tuba and the sad trombone. It's a twofer. Here we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, and stop. There it is. So now when I click this, ah, look at that, I got in here. It's a 
The center's a tree node. What? What? Ooh. Okay. Okay. What do we have in the orgs? Value is true. Is that because... Okay, let's... So now if I uncheck it, is the value false? Yahtzee, there it is, right there. We got it. Okay. So, did we even need that? I don't think we needed that. Hang on, go back over here. Where is it? On tree node expanded, we're done with that. Tree node event args, no. Tree node collapse, don't need that one. Tree node check changed. But it, it's not telling us. Oh, wait a sec. Wait a tick. Um, we have the checked event up, uh, parameter up here. We should set that appropriately, right? Right? Uh, this dot checked, did it set it for us? It probably didn't because we're not binding to it. We're okay to do it this way. This dot checked equals args dot value. Yeah, you're right. E Eternal dev coder, you're right. Um, extraordinary R. Um, I, if you have a question, we can certainly try to answer it. If it's a longer question with some source code, I would encourage you to post it into the channel Discord. And uh, there's a bunch of folks that are hanging out there that can certainly help and take a look at your question. Um, so this checked, args value, we know this is going to be a boolean, so I can convert it like that, and that's good. I should then raise the event if the, uh, right, if parent tree view uh, on tree node check changed, if there is something, right, we, so we do the the Elvis operator there that says, if there's something actually on this, invoke. And we're going to pass through this and uh, new tree node event args this, because we're inside of a node. Done. Oh, it feels so good. I think we've got this. I think we've got this. Checkboxes razor. We could put a test on this that it that it is handling that properly. I just want to run this. See what pops out the other side. And I think that'll give us our events appropriately here. So, yeah. Um, I think I did wire up the right into the sample, into the index for the tree view. No. Where is it? Pages, control samples, tree view, index. Did I do I still have that wired up? Uh no. How did I get it to trigger those? Well, it's working. So, so now I've got, right, now I can receive and handle those events, right? If I update this and say uh, on uh, tree node check changed, uh, right, I can have it do something here, right? Not quite sure what happened down here. Um, right, I can have this say uh, uh, check changed and actually generate a a method to do that. Uh, check 
boxes clicked. Um, no, private int click count equals zero. Right, I can do something like that. What was the name of my method? Check changed. Uh, private void check changed. Uh, object sender. Uh, tree node event args args. And I can just say quick count increment. Refresh that. I could. Uh, there you go. Checkbox is clicked. Ooh. It's not executing that. Hmm. Uh, what do we got here? Something else good just came up. Um, <laughs> you have an interface and you're calling a method on it. You're implementing it. Yeah. Let me come to your your problem here in just a second. Let me finish trying to debug and see what's going on here. I'm going to put a breakpoint on this. And let's start this with a debugger attached. Here we go. And tree view. Click. And it it's not... It's not connecting over there. On tree, no check changed. Let's walk the hierarchy. That's not connecting somewhere. So, okay. Uh, back over in tree node. Handle checkbox. Let's see, does that get clicked? Yes. Okay. Parent tree view. On tree, no check changed is null. So it doesn't have anything wired up to that. On tree node check changed. On tree node check changed. That's a thing right there. Why is it saying that's null? Hmm. Valentine, hello. Where have I been? I've been here. What's the parent tree view? So from from the uh from the tree view object here, it has these tree nodes. The tree nodes are here. The parent tree view is that containing object. And it's telling me that the on tree node check changed event handler is not connected. There isn't something set there. Uh, so let's go back over to tree view. This is a parameter with an event handler. Tree node event args on tree node check change. That looks legit. Why doesn't it think that's a thing? Hmm. Why doesn't it think that's a thing? Right, it's uh, here. No. Um, where'd it go? I don't care about this one. Don't care about this one right now. Or that one. Nor you. Or that. This. On tree node check changed. 
And it it's oh wait a sec, look at this. Was that was that a thing? Was that what it was doing here? Please tell me that was it. I think that was I think I just had some bad formatting there and it was getting grouchy. We'll take a look at your example here in just a second extraordinary. I think I think we can help you out with that. That looks Now I got handle checkbox. All right. On tree node check changed. Now it's got an event handler. Step that through. There it is. Now I've got click count. Right? Now what? It's calling click count. I bet you it's because it's a variable. It's a private here and not a... Right? Restart that. Mary Jo Stabler is here. Good afternoon. Well, actually, good morning, my friend. Good to see you. Mary Jo's another member of the Live Coders team. Make sure you check her out. Can we get a shout out? There you go. Hugo's already on it. Look at that. No, but still not incrementing that counter. Why? Why you no do this? Because it's clearly triggering that. Click count plus. Do I need to do a, do I need to force the refresh? What is it? Base. State has changed. I feel stupid calling that. Woke up at 4 a.m. and starting to fade. Oh my goodness. You take care. Because it returns void. That could be. Take that off. Let it ride. There we go. Now it's doing it. Cool. Oops. <laughs> eh, I clicked the wrong thing. Um, but that works now. Fantastic. I'm properly handling it, and it's flowing back and forth. I like it. So, we have this working. I should add a test for that, um, for the checkbox. I'm going to leave that up to you, chat room, to add that. For right now, let me commit these changes that I have. Um, let's see. Um, I'm okay with adding the playlist also. That's not too bad. So let's add all the files. I'm going to reseed my YubiKey. Um, added uh, tree. Add added expand, collapse, and uh, checked event handlers. We still need to add those events that'll trigger appropriately those. There's my pin. And there we go. Push that out and let that be updated out there. Okay. Now, let me come to the questions um, that Extraordinary had over here. Let's just take a quick look and th this is a very much a, a simple C-sharp project type of question. Um, and this is a console app uh, that we'll take a look at. Yeah, sure, whatever. So Extraordinary has, a, has three classes that they're working with here. And I'm going to simplify and put them all in the same... Uh, all in the same file here so we can see it. So, first there's an interface called iCode. And then there's a class called Class 1. And it has, so Class 1 implements iCode and it has a method called Go. Console app 1, right, which is what we have down here, um, has a couple methods in it. 
So we'll get rid of that. And it has these. So we have main, and we're going to call opt one, which is class one, new class one. Good. Opt one, some method. So class one, some method. There it is, some method. It knows how to do that. The second line here is creating a new class one, but is casting it to interface type iCode. iCode only knows how to go. So obj2, some method, it doesn't know how to do that because obj2, as you've declared, right? And this is, this is some object-oriented discussion, right? Some class design things that's going on here. You've declared that it's of type, that interface type, iCode. So when you try to call some method, C Sharp doesn't know that obj2 is a class one. C Sharp knows that obj2 is an iCode. So it doesn't know how to call some method because some method doesn't exist on iCode. Does that make sense? Um, extraordinary? That it's, right, this, while yes, it is a class one, you've dropped, it doesn't know all the other things that class one is capable of because you told it it was an I code. Now, a couple different ways that you can address this. If you use duck typing, right, if you use var with this, well, that means that the obj2 is going to be whatever type it sees, so it'll become another class one. But the, the other way to look at this is, well, I could make this an I code and add some method to this. Right? Add that to my interface uh, definition and now obj2 knows how to call some method. So I'm going to take a second here. It looks like you have a follow-up question. I'm going to make sure. Ah! Okay. So let, th this is a good question and these are, these are great questions from Extraordinary. Let me put this up on the on the feature chat so we can talk about this. Why doesn't obj2, why isn't it effectively the same as? It's it's not because you created it as a second class, class one. So there's actually two objects sitting in two different locations in memory. And because you've told it when it, right, you, you've declared, when you declare the type of obj1 and the type of obj2, C Sharp has allocated the appropriate memory, right, and the appropriate shape for the type you've declared, class 1 or I code. What you stick into that memory space that's been allocated is a class 1. So all the other things on the outward API are forgotten. Yeah, there's a class one sitting out there somewhere else, but the shape that it's looking for and then that it's going to make available to you is this. So why do we use interface? Why do we use interfaces on obj1? Well, um, you would use those interfaces to pass around because you want to abstract away some of those features, right? You might have, right? So let me get rid of, I added this. Right? You might also have class two, right? That um, also implements I code, right? And I'm going to implement that interface and it has a go method. And this says engine starts in start time three. Well, maybe, maybe this is different. Maybe this is, we're starting engine right now, right? Console right line starting now right and maybe instead of calling these class one and class two maybe this is right delayed start and maybe this one is start now so now right right if um and this might be start now now, right, let's even make this an I code for the purpose of this, right? So now they both have the Go feature. So this is why you have interfaces is, right, I can 
have, right? Uh, let's get rid of this, get rid of that, right? I just have, right, let's call this my engine starter, right? To, to make this a little bit easier to reference some of these. I know it's a, deviating a little in the naming and things from your example, but I want to make sure that you we, we kind of land on the right spot here. So this is a new delayed start engine starter go. Well, this is going to write out just engine starts in three. But, right, I can change this and still call go by calling this new start now. So it's still going to go, but it's going to go right now. So we can swap out those lower level features and still have the rest of our program behave the same way, right? This is very top level how our program runs. It calls that engine starter and says go. But, right, we can change up the guts. We can change up those inner workings. We can, we can rewire it, um, right? Gosh, what, what's the quote from, from Tim Allen in Home Improvement? Um, so, so I rewired it. And, and we can make that behave differently internal to the application. And we still have the same external interface. Think about it when you build an application, when you build a website and somebody clicks a button, well, that button's going to go do something. But if you're going to enhance what that button does, you can enhance that without changing the outward interface, that button that folks are interacting with. Same thing here. We're changing the internals of it by swapping out. And it still works. It's still, right, this still does the same thing. We're just assigning a different type that you're going to be interacting with. So, extraordinary. D does that help a little bit? And I can even, uh, I can even, let me, let me just back up a second here. If we go back to how this stream started today, and you're welcome to rewind to look at the video here on Twitch and, and roll back. We did something very similar today, and, and chat room, chime in. I, some of you have been watching for a good part of our session today, where we changed the interface. We, we used the same interface for our tree view and how we declared the nodes in that tree we, but we swapped out the implementation of it and we had the same, we, right? We provided the same, um, the same interface to build and declare our tree. It was the same, in, to, to borrow from your example, it was the same I code, but we changed out the way that nodes were represented. So instead of it just being echo whatever's there, just whatever's inside that element, spit it out on the screen. We brought something in that was a little bit smarter that would collect information about those nodes so we could then raise events. And if you go back and look at the video, and I encourage you to check it out, um, Extraordinary, you might, it might help to make it, this a little bit clearer. All of our tests, because they use that same front-end interface, just like I'm showing here, continued to work because I, I swapped out and provided the same feature. Really great stuff. Uh, not quite, not quite a concept. Okay, it, it is. It's an interesting concept. It's fundamental to object-oriented programming, um, and and when you start to grasp how and where you can drop those in those interfaces, it's Jerry really going to help just you resubscribed for ten months with your class things. design. Do the things, Jeremy Knight. Thank you so much for that resub, and we're going to make a donation to code.org. Um, let me, let me show you, let me show you one more, um, example of how we swap things out, um, with interfaces to make it a little bit easier. There's concepts that, that we have called dependency injection. So the idea is we have, so in your sample here, we have this I code thing that we pass in and that's an interface to, we had, right, this was, um, class one, right? And I created another class here. Well, dependency injection 
would be something like having a class, um, right? That's a driver, right? And a driver uh, has a constructor here, right? And this is some information about how they get, how they they start their engine here, right? And we're gonna put that somewhere over here. And I'm going to just stash a copy of this uh, over here like this. Um, what do you mean it's less accessible? Uh, oh, sure. Thank you. Um, so now our driver, right? Um, And this is going to just say like that. So up here, instead of interacting directly, right? Um, var driver equals new driver. Now we would say driver go, but we need to pass in. So the driver knows how to run right, uh, I engine starter, right? We need to pass in an I engine starter. Well, we want to do an uh, a new start now, right? So the driver, right? And here we're getting into class design. So the driver knows how to go, how to start his engine. So we're gonna and we're gonna pass in a start now, and right, our program doesn't change even if we want to do a delayed start. But then consider, maybe we're gonna test this so we could have a new test starter object that, right, maybe, right, has something in here, um, Right, and implement that interface. And, right, uh, or, you know, maybe let's call this error starter. We want to make sure that this handles errors properly. So we could say throw new not implemented. It still does the same thing, but this time it'll throw an error. So we're changing out the implementation without affecting the rest of our application. It's a really, really powerful concept that as you start to work with will, will make the structure of your applications um, more flexible and you'll be able to evolve your applications in the future. Really, really great stuff and powerful stuff that uh, you're gonna, it's going to take a little bit of time to learn and to get the feel of, but it's the ability to swap these out that uh, is extremely powerful. And you see a lot of folks do this, do this technique um, with what we call the repository pattern. How do you access data? Do you access data from disk? Do you access data from a database? Do you request it over the web as an HTTP request? No problem, extraordinary. Um, it, to finish that point, that, that data interaction they'll have different classes and then they'll swap in to their web page to tell it well here's how to get it from disk or here's how to get it from over the web best of luck to you extraordinary please if you have any more questions we're happy to answer those over in the discord and hang out here in the channel always happy to talk talk through these things and show a little bit of a demo thank you so much for for the question really appreciate it and maybe we'll try and clip this and put it out as a separate video about interfaces. There was another one we did uh, the other day about dependency injection as well. So, all right. You know what, it's it's almost, we're closing in on two, oh, two o'clock. Let me wrap things up here. This was this was really great today. I think, we, I think we accomplished a bit. We focused on, we got our three events built and you know what, we've, we've got those committed to source control. And if I take a look over on GitHub, let me get over to GitHub. Um, we should have a we should have a positive build here on this feature tree view branch. Let's take a look. I should have that's I don't know if that's the check for this. There, this one 
tells me that it built properly. All of our tests passed. Um, there it is, just a few minutes ago. Here's our tests, 82 tests successful. Took about three seconds to run everything. Fantastic. I love seeing that we're continuing to build our software and it's evolving properly. This is really great. Um, and we'll continue working on our tree view tomorrow. Let me see who, can, who we can raid out there. I'm gonna take a peek at what else is going on over on Twitch. I want to set up for a raid because uh, I want to pay it forward. I want to share the love to some of our other streamer friends out there that are doing some cool stuff. Um, you know, you know who would be fun to raid. This would be really fun to raid. But let me see. I think. Nah. Let's raid. I'm gonna raid somebody different from t for today. Let's raid somebody we haven't ever raided before. I want to raid. Ready for this? Do you like Lego? Do you love the Lego friends? Um, somebody that that I briefly met. He probably doesn't remember who I am. Is uh, Brick and Nick. Nick builds Lego live on channel, and he's a creator. Always doing some really cool things. Building and working with Legos here live on Twitch. So, friends, uh, if you're a subscriber, copy the top line right here onto your clipboard. Get ready to announce ourselves. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line, copy that onto your clipboard, and we're going to go raid Brickin' Nick. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate it. This video, like all my other videos, will be over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fritz. I've uh, I put a bunch of videos. I think we sent four or five more videos over there over the last two days. I'll send some more over this afternoon, and you should uh, definitely see those popping up if you're a subscriber over there on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much. This was really great today. I'm happy to see the progress, and we'll be back tomorrow with more Blazor Web Components. Take care.